Greetings artists and welcome to another episode of Evident Design. In this chilling painting tutorial, we'll be painting this painting right here. We're going to be using some interesting light and shadow effects. Are you ready? Let's find out. Alright artists, so now that we're inside, closing up by the fire, let's uh, go through how to make this creepy painting here. Now, usually I just start with a pretty dark canvas, or darker than white, and this is very dark because I wanted to have this realistic, mm, you know, photorealistic type thing going on. Uh, the, the canvas is about, I think, 2500 by 1400. So, now I'm painting brighter on a dark background. And, you know, you can change it up. You can start with wider background, like brighter, and then make it darker. But for this one, I was thinking specifically, you know, that kind of effect where whenever you're looking at, you know, a, a photo in the forest or something like that. So, um, so yeah, I just start with some simple colors here. And uh, you can already start to see that there's some ground there and some tall shapes, probably trees. I'm not sure if the fire is loud, but uh, it's really nice to sit close to here. It's very dark and cold around here. And believe it or not, it's Halloween and it's um, pretty creepy being here in the, in the farmhouse. But uh, yeah. We're, we're all good sitting inside a painting here, so, so yeah, I thought to have this like main tree sticking out of this right now in the, in the, in the uh, foreground there. And I'm using some screen for the brush mode and changing it up to normal. You know, I, I'm not really sure how to pull this off, but I'm just trying it out, you know, seeing if... Um, what I do will work, or not. But I'm taking it step by step, making it brighter and brighter and starting to show some more texture. And this brush is pretty cool, I think. It's, uh, it gives it a sketchy feel. Now, if you look up there in the navigator, up to the right, you can see that it's starting to take shape. It's starting to look like something, some photograph of something. And yeah, I'm just putting down the shapes as usual. And now I'm hearing sounds on the attic. It's really creepy. <laughs> but, um, yeah. And so the light will sort of hit from the flash of the, of the camera. So this will be like, an, like a photorealistic camera shot or something like that. Like you're taking a photo and you're seeing some creature or something like that. So, yeah, I'm just sketching my way forward here to see if anything pops out. And I'm using a very toned down color here and just doing some color balance. I wanted to have a bit more blue in this. Putting in some white, because there will be some very sharp whites in this. Not completely white though, because I still want to keep it kind of um, muted down. And uh, I want to have enough space to be able to push my values. You know, you never want to go to um, like, you want to still keep some of your dynamic range. Because if you start pa painting too dark or too um, bright, then you won't have any room to push your dynamics, and push your values. So I, it's a good idea to kind of tone them down a bit. I just shut off uh, Slack there. My team members from Evident are working. So here I just uh, made... Like I said before, I just made everything kind of brighter. Just to have a little bit more tonal variety or tonal space, I should say. The tone shouldn't be too dark or too bright, like I just explained. So I'm just uh, going in, painting on everything in one layer. And um, trying some different brushes, 
A lot about the textures and, and the light in this painting. And to make it creepy, you know, you should should work on um, on not um, explaining too much, you know, more suggestive stuff. Which we will see later when I add in some creepier stuff. So I hope you guys are doing well this Halloween. And uh, this is actually my second uh, tutorial for Halloween. You should check out the first one where I paint this um, car scene. And there's like these floating giant ghosts and stuff like that. So I'm just adding some more volume to this tree. And um, I'm thinking about how how it looks like. I mean, the, the best way to do this is actually check out a reference. How does a tree look when you're <clears throat> taking a shot of it with a flashlight or something like that? And it's often very bright in the middle, and then it, as it goes around, it becomes um, very dark because of the, the shadow. It's going to move away a bit from the fire. It's very... Hot. So I'm just adding some more shapes, more straight up, so it kind of looks more like a forest and not just two lone trees. The uh, evident um, Halloween challenge is still going on right now. Been seeing some really creepy and cool painting submissions on the Evident platform so far. Really cool stuff. If you want to join, you still have time. So, yeah, you can see here I'm, I'm doing this sort of thing where there's a dark background and then I'm doing some bright um, sort of stuff in the foreground. That's kind of how it looks, you know. You see the super, super sharp contrast whenever you're flashing your flashlight in. Um, in a dark room or something like that. The shadows become right behind whatever you're looking at. And uh, yeah, I'm keeping it kind of simple. Not overthinking, you know, colors or anything like that. This is all about the values. Later on, I will start working with some color, but you know, it's... Um, I mean, I am working with color right now, but that's not, it's not too big of a design element right now. The, it's more of the light and stuff. And you see I toned everything down, so the, the blacks are a bit brighter and the, the whites are a bit darker. So I have more room later to push that, like right now. I can add some vignetting. And it's looking more and more realistic if you can uh, squint your eyes a bit. Here I'm just using a, a burn, using the burn tool with shadows, kind of pushing the contrast a bit more. Using some multiply, normal. And I switch around a lot between these brush modes. Adding on some more texture on the on the tree. It's a really strong wind outside. Should probably go out and secure some stuff. Yeah, now I'm adding in some more perspective lines here, where it sort of uh, looks like actual ground. So now I made a new layer. I want to make something creepy behind this thing here, you know, some creature or something like that. So, but I don't want to show it too much, you know, I want to still kind of make it camouflaged. And so I'm just playing around with the design right now, adding in some shapes. And sort of having a foot or something go out there. This is all just experimenting, seeing if it works. And 
uh, lots of weird sounds <laughs> in the old farmhouse. This, is, this farmhouse is from 1850, so it, it's, it, it should be haunted, you know, technically speaking. You see here, something is taking shape now in the background there, getting more and more creepy. And there I'm just starting to see like a face, so a head. And so I pursue whatever I see. You know, I just put down shapes and then I start seeing stuff. Maybe that's the back. The body. The leg. Maybe they, it has more than one, than four legs, two arms and two legs. And so now I'm pushing um, where the light will actually hit. So hitting the elbow or something like that. And thinking about the light always. Making it still look kind of three dimensional. And this all comes down to you know, c continuing to, to practice your fundamentals, practice um, light and values and design principles and all that stuff. Glowing eyes, you have to have that. <laughs> Just as it raises the, the creepy, creepiness value. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what, what I was doing there. That just looks silly. What does that remind me of? Uh, something. Yeah, now it looks more more creepy. You should just try it out, because, you know, it's just a few values. It's not too much happening there. And remember, when, it, when it's about creepy stuff and horror, you want to make sure that they don't understand what it is, like your audience should be kind of like, wait, what is that, you know? Ugh. And I thought that that looked kind of cool, with one eye being a bit more blown out by the light. Kind of how deer and, and cats and stuff. You know, the light from... And then the dark kind of reflects very... Uh, pretty strong. Just trying out some design on what, what we see here. I don't want to make it too friendly or, or too characteristic or something like that. Still want to keep that really strange and unknown feeling of this. Still thinking about the light. And reference is really good for this. Check out references with like um, some shots in the forest night or something like that. Or if you dare, you can go out and try yourself, bring a flashlight and take a photo. Or just take your, your phone and put the flash on. That's a perfect uh, reference for you. You see, it's kind of looking too cute, I thought. Can I write it here? It's just way too cute. The eyes, I think, and so I need to make him uglier or creepier. And one way, one way of doing that is putting the eyes super close to each other or making him look, look more human or something like that. You see, now it looks much more menacing and creepy, weird. And you see, now I'm just adding on too much stuff, and it shouldn't be like that. It should be very, very obscure. The more obscure, the better. Yeah, I mean, you should, you should hint what it is, but not uh, show too much. I think that's what, that's what a lot of horror movies do wrong, you know? Whenever you start to see the monster or see the whatever it is, then it's not scary anymore because you've already seen it. 
but um, if you don't see it, then it's much, uh, much creepier. Or if you see hints of it. Ah, this fire is so nice. It's becoming winter here. It's October or November 1st. So I'm just making some more details and um, sculpting out this creature. It's part, all part of my method of painting which I call the S3 method. I teach all about it in my online course in my design and in my ebook, Concept Art Accelerator. You know, you start with the shapes and uh, as you go on, you continue with the, um, the forms and stuff where you sculpt your shapes. And then finally you sculpt everything into one piece and then you season it. So you season it with details, just like a chef does with his food. So now I just merged everything into one and I'm trying to, to find a good balance here. I don't want to show too much, but I don't want to show too little either because then it just becomes one black mess. So here I want to push the lighting. And so I'm using dodge tool. And that's what will make it look very realistic, this flashlight feel. Of course, with some other things. And you can do this too much. You can overdo this. So it's good to take it step by step. Like if you just go in the forest and you see this, you, you might think it's just a just a log or something sticking out there and you wouldn't notice it too much. But then you see, oh, it's actually some creature camouflaging. <laughs> so now I'm going in and I'm doing a bunch of stuff with the color balance and I'm adding a gradient uh, look up, gradient map. You can do a lot with that actually. It just changes all the colors to whatever you want with that gradient and it maps it accordingly. So I just go around and trying out some different colors and seeing if that works better but in the end I actually push this back a lot and just kind of stick to what I had from the beginning. But that's whole, the whole process of designing and trying stuff out. You know, you just see what works. If it doesn't work, you just take it away. Especially when you have layers like this. Just adding some more branches and stuff like that. Small tree. It's also just about shapes. You know, there's not much details and stuff happening right now. I don't usually do this um, style, but I really love horror, so <laughs> I was looking forward to doing this for Halloween as well. If you check the um, the other video I made, it was pretty fun. Kind of a Stranger Things sort of vibe. Just adding some more trees and. You know, the concept is there now, so you can just push it to, to a finish. And it's finished when you say it is. Just adding some more directionality to the perspective there, kind of pointing into this, that creature or that tree. You want to lead the eye of your audience. I 
adding some more marks here, kind of like a birch tree. You know, this is the focal point of the image, so you want to spend a bit more time there. If you see the rest of it, you know, it's not that well rendered or haven't pushed it too much. But it's only been like, what, 25 minutes? Something like that. But still, you know, the first sort of 30 minutes of a painting is or an hour, I guess, is the, um, the most important. So here I actually did like this face, but I decided to go in and change it anyway. I'm not sure why, but tried to do something else. Yeah, hearing lots of creepy sounds outside. Ugh. Yeah, now it's even more creepy because you can't almost not see it. Now I'm just adding more eyes and stuff, and now you have no idea what this is. <laughs> So what I'm doing now is actually adding some, some of this um, photo effect. You know, this is what you get with um, cameras and stuff like that. You get this chromatic aberration, that's the word. And it just looks like a, like a photo effect. Putting on that gradient map, seeing if that helps or not. So now it's really all about tweaking and I'm adding some color. I made a new layer called color. Trying out some stuff, making it more purple maybe, or more uh, bluish in the, in the background. More greenish in the light. You know, you can try out some of this stuff, see if it works better. And there's mice, by the way, in this farmhouse. Which also makes a lot of noise. Yeah. Stuck in the middle of the mountains. Great way to spend Halloween. <laughs> yeah, let me know where you guys are, where you're from, and uh, what you're doing for Halloween. And of course, anything you want to see from me, any painting videos or any, any specific requests, you just let me know. Just a few minutes more on this uh, painting here. So now I'm making a new layer, filling it with um, gray, adding noise. I want to push the filmic grain here, so to make it really look like an actual photo or something like that. Putting some Gaussian blur there. Now here I'm actually taking away, I'm duplicating that layer and I'm taking away the, the two channels. And now when I warp this or when I, um, you'll see here when I do free transform on that layer, I'm just redoing that thing by the way, but with the grain. Um, when I duplicate this, uh, you'll see here in a bit. I'm just gonna wait until I do that again. So you see I'm duplicating it and then I'm going into it and I'm taking away green and the blue. And now if I, if I warp it and free transform it, you see how it gets this, that same filmic effect, you know, the chromatic aberration, which also indicates, you know, this is an actual photo or something like that. And I'm just taking some of that away actually from the focal point, just to have that in the shadows and stuff. You can definitely overdo this though, so all these things that I'm doing here in the end, just make sure you don't overdo them too much. <laughs> so now it's all about just final tweaks. Yeah, pretty strong wind. This is the uh, south southeasterly wind. It blows through the valley here. And when it comes, it really blows hard wind. It'll be an interesting night. 
So yeah, that's, uh, that's about it. I'm just making a new stamp and doing some unsharp mask here. And uh, yeah, that's about it, guys. So I hope that um, you learned something cool from this uh, tutorial. And I wish you a great Halloween and a continued great week to start to your November. So I'll see you on the next uh, tutorial. Take it easy, guys.